Good afternoon. Thanks for joining with us again. Um, this afternoon, we're going to have another edition of our new series, Christian Conversion Chats, where just in a, a short chat, interview, we're going to hear from another uh, long-standing member of the Anna Gospel Hall, Moira Summers. Hi, Moira. Thanks for joining with us. Very pleased to be here, Gordon. Thank you, Moira. So I just want to start by asking you, where were you born and brought up? I was born and brought up um, in Torrey, Aberdeen. Right. And, and can you tell us a bit about your family? Did you have any brothers Yes, I had um, my mum and my dad, and um, there was three of us. There was um, my big sister, Roberta, and myself. And... Um, Seven years, when I was seven, my, my younger sister was born. Um, in between, I, I did have a sister whose name was Norma, who was um, hardly ever at home. She was always in the hospital, and she actually died when she was um, five and a half. And it was, after, it was a year after her death that my young sister was born, to Christine. Right, uh-huh. So mm -hmm. would, you, would you say your family was religious? Uh, well, maybe that word up to a point. They weren't born again believers. Mm -hmm. but, um, my mother saw to it. Um, my mother was a member of the um, of the Anglican Church, and there yeah. was one in Tory, a short walking distance. So we went to the church there, and followed by the Sunday school when we were old enough to go. Um, and fortunately, we stayed opposite, right opposite um, Victoria Hall in Torrey, which uh -huh. was a gospel hall. Mm -hmm. And their Sunday school was at three o'clock. Uh -huh. So after we had our lunch, we trotted across to their Sunday school. So we were, we were, um, we went to two Sunday schools. Right, uh-huh. Where, where was it you heard the gospel then? Or how did you hear the gospel? Right, well, um, that's quite hard, but I was always aware that there was a God. Mm -hmm. Always. That was, that, was, um, that was never an issue. And as I say, we went to the church with my mother in our earlier years, and um, we went to two Sunday schools. And so I was always aware that there was a God and that yeah. he was he was watching. But um, I didn't really become a Christian until I was 15. Mm -hmm. Didn't um, until, you know, I was I was born again when I was 15, because I realized that although I did read my Bible and although I went to church and Sunday school, um, I just had a growing sense that I wasn't I wasn't a Christian. It was a, a it was a slowly dawning on me, mm -hmm. and um, and I remember one night just coming out of the of a gospel meeting, and I was fifteen, but then and I just um, bowed my head and I just confessed that um, Jesus was Lord, and I, I wanted to be a Christian and. All at once, there was a seemed to be a whole burden lifted from me, some somehow or other, and I was uh -huh. I was I felt very very light after that, and um, and so I just went on. I got um, baptized by immersion, um, according mm -hmm. to the scriptures. Just um, I this I got I was baptized uh, several months after I was saved. And then um, when I was um, 16, I was added to the company of believers um, in the Gospel Hall in Tory. So, mm -hmm. and my big sister, of course, uh, she actually got saved when she was 10. Right, uh -huh. uh, she, was, she was less than two years older than me. I think there was a year and eight months between us. So we were always very close. And uh -huh. um, so, and she was um, a member of of Tory uh, uh, Gospel Hall at that time as well. So 
um, as I say, I was baptized and added to the company. And um, there yeah. we were, my big sister and myself. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. So when was it you, when it, you, you started doing your, your nursing training then? Was it around that right. time? Or? Yes, well, I left school when I was 16, and uh, a year, uh, and I worked in an office uh, for a year, and just slowly it came to me, um, I don't want to do this anymore, and um, I realised uh, I was really quite keen on nursing. So mm-hmm. um, I applied to the Sick Children's Hospital in Aberdeen when I was 17, and I was accepted, and um, I did my training there. It was a three-year training, and um, I was um, a registered um, sick children's nurse after that. Uh, was it around that time that Roberta was looking after you all? My, um, my mother died when, when I was 18. She, she, she had a, a, quick, a quick growing cancer, uh, in fact, very, very quick. She she died within being six weeks of um of being diagnosed, mm-hmm. and um I was um I was in my first year of nursing at, at, at that time, and I remember coming off night duty, and the night sister saying to me, um um by the way, she said I got a phone call about four o'clock in the morning, um just to just to uh, say that. My mother had passed away, you know, oh in the house, in the home. Mm-hmm. She was nursed in the home. Um, my big sister, she took time off work and she um, she actually nursed my mother. Right, uh-huh. uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So I was 18, Roberta was 20 and Christine was still at the primary. Just, I think that she would have been at P6 or P7. Mm-hmm. So... When you finished then your nursing training in Aberdeen, what did you do after that? Right. Well, towards um, towards the end of my training, I began to think um, of my general training, and mm. um, but I realised that um, for some reason or other, I wasn't keen to go to Aberdeen Royal. I don't know why. But I just seemed to have a check in my spirit each time I thought about it. And, you know, um, so I remember talking to one of the elders um, in the meeting about it. Mm-hmm. And um, and I was just telling them, you know, I wasn't quite sure what to do. And um, I was praying hard and I wasn't getting an answer. And he was very straight with me. He says, no, he says, it's not that you're not getting an answer, he said, it's that you're maybe no. not accepting what the answer is. Now, I wasn't aware of that. And I, I, I said to him, oh, I don't think so. And he challenged me that night. It was a Wednesday night. And he challenged me. He said, well, you get down in your hands and knees tonight and, um, and you pray that the Lord will open up for your mm-hmm. your you have to go for your other training and he said and I'll pray for you he said um and you'll have an answer in the morning so how's yes. how's that for faith eh? yeah, so anyway I did exactly as he said mm-hmm. and it was a, a, a um well that was that was a, um, a Wednesday night and um I used to always walk this particular overseer um over over the town so he could get a bus a bus home, you know. Very mm-hmm. few folk had cars at this time. And um, this was in the 1950s. And um and I remember just doing exactly what he said. And I had a day off on the Thursday. And when I woke on Thursday morning, Glasgow Royal Infirmary was ringing in the ears. Yeah. Now I had never I well I was going to say I never heard the Glasgow Royal Infirmary, but I would have known that there was a Royal Infirmary in Glasgow. But I mean, I didn't know anything about it. I mm-hmm. didn't. I didn't know a thing about it. We once went holidays to Glasgow when when I was about ten, and um, for a week, my mother was visiting somebody that she knew, and um, 
And so apart from that, I'd never been in Glasgow. <laughs> yeah. So so all that all that day, um I was really challenged, you know, and I just couldn't get out of my mind, Glasgow Royal Infirmary. Now I was kind of scared to say anything to my big sister because, you know, it would it meant leaving her with the burden of the of the home in a way, you know. But um so anyway, when she came in at night from her work, um, I did I did tell her, and she just said, "Well, if that's what you've got to do, that's what you've got to do, Moira." So um, I remember, um, I just um, shortly after, just days after that, um, I wrote I wrote a letter um, to Glasgow Royal Infirmary uh, just to say that I had finished my sick children's and I was keen to do general nursing. And would they accept me? Mm -hmm. So just within a week, I got back a letter to say um, there was a place, I think it was either September or October. So, I mean, everything was very fast moving for me. So, yeah. and, and of course, and, um, and these days, you know, nurses had to stay in the nurse's home. So, so uh, it wasn't, a, it wasn't um, on me to, to find, um, to find a room or some somewhere to stay, you know, I, I had to stay in the in the nurse's home, which um, everybody else had to do then. So, yeah. um, so um, I started my training there. Mm -hmm. Now, um, very fortunately, and which I never knew um, previous, there there was um, a gospel um, a gospel meeting just about a ten minute walk from Glasgow Royal. Uh -huh. There was, a, um, um, there was um, a little gathering, a little assembly there. So um, I, I got um, an introductory letter from um, the elders in Chori uh, to the elders in this um, in this little meeting, and mm -hmm. um, that you know um, I was a Christian and um, I, I broke bread up in Aberdeen and had just come to Glasgow. Yeah, so yeah. um so I went um the church the little church was there waiting on me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um and I went I went there now they, they used to have a Saturday night meetings as well. And um if I was off I would go there. Yeah. And um, and it was there that I met my, my husband to be Jim. Jim he, yeah. him, him and his him and his friend um, used to go up there. It was, a, it was, you know, a little church in the in the in the town head area um, of uh, Glasgow, and uh, they went. Um, him and his pal went there on a Saturday, and if I was off, I went on a Saturday. And um, and his cousin also worked in was a nurse in Glasgow Royal, just about six months um, in front of me, um, mm -hmm. um, in our in our training. So um, so all in all. Um, God was in it from the start, you know. Yeah, yeah, you can see God's hand and yeah, getting you from Aberdeen to Glasgow, uh, and yeah. then but bringing you and Jim together as well. Yep. So, was it about time you and Jim got married, or did you mention no. you went back to Aberdeen at that point as well? Um, well, I, I I did the training. I got because I had done my sick kids. I got a year off my training. So from fifty seven to fifty nine, um when I did my my general training and I passed. So I went back to Aberdeen to do my midwifery, which at that time was a year. It was in two six months. The first six months was uh, what I was spent in the in the classroom, you know, doing doing all the work. And the second the second six months um was that you know practical and you had to do uh, 10 deliveries um, of babies um, on, on the district too, which um, I absolutely loved. Uh -huh. so, um, so, as I say, I went back to Aberdeen to do my midwifery, finished that about um, the November on, or December, and on, on March 1961, um, Jim and I got, 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 got married uh -huh. um, in Chori, and then he was teaching in Bridge of Weir. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a school in Bridge of Weir um, um, in, in, in Courier's Homes. There was a secondary school in Courier's Homes. 
yeah. that used to be called the, the Orphan Homes of Scotland. So um, Jim taught there in the Sunday School um, and um, in the school in Bridge of Year. Uh, and we were there for about a year. And then he, he got a post um, in Glenrothes and we came to stay in Glen, Glen, Glenrothes in 1961, that would be, I think. Um, yes, uh -huh. 1961. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I can remember the time when you, came, you, you and Jim came to Kennaway and you were, you were members there. But I don't, yeah. I, I don't think Jim was working at that time, was he? Well, um... <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't remember that far back. I mean, Jim, um, Jim, he he took a heart attack in um, in 1952 actually, and then um, he um, he retired. Um, I think in '59 um, he would have retired. He was um, he was he was 59 when he retired in, anyway from school, mm -hmm. and. Um, I haven't mentioned I've got two sons, um, David and Martin. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember Jim well, actually. As you say, uh -huh. he, was, he, he retired from school. But I remember that he would visit lots of people in the assembly. He would visit my family. Oh, and actually, yeah. in, in the old bedroom I have at mom and dad's house, mm -hmm. there's actually a still shelves that he put up in that old mm -hmm. bedroom mm -hmm. that had he all was... my books on it. He was very handy and he was a great visitor, you know, um, um, he, he did, he did a lot of um, visitation to uh, people, you know, so that was his, um, once, once he retired from school, that's just what he spent his time doing, helping others and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh -huh. meet, meet, meeting their, their needs, either physically or spiritually, you know, or practically, you know. So, um, uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah, he was very, very, very good at that, as you say, and it was oh, appreciated oh, I, by mm -hmm. lots, lots of people. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you could do anything. I mean, it was just one of these very handy people. It didn't matter what you asked him to do, he would, he would, he would do it. You know, he was excellent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was it, and then, and then he died when he was fifty-nine. Mm. And so, uh, he died. He died. Um, he died in the May, and I was I was sixty um, on the July, and I was working two days a week, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, I retired. I retired when I was sixty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and then it was it was around that time that you. you but you started volunteering as a counsellor, is that right? Yes, I, I want to um, just, um, well, Jim died in a way, and I think towards the September, October, there was um, a course um, advertised by Cruise, you know, Cruise, Cruise Bereavement, um, mm -hmm. who is the, their offices then it was in metal. Uh, um, I don't know if they're still there, but anyway, Cruise Bereavement, they were they were offering um a foundational counseling course which was six months. Mm -hmm. And um and I thought, oh, I would just love to do that. So and that's what I did. Yeah, I did yeah. that and then that year as well, um there's a counseling centre in Leslie and I I I went to work um on the desk there, you know, taking mm -hmm. phone calls and and that kind of thing, and just um, running, making tea for um, you know um, so, so, so some of the counsellors um, and the clients. So, um, so that was me. So I was uh, totally occupied once I once I had um, retired. You know, I, I really I really uh -huh. enjoyed my my time with Cruz. It was lovely. Uh -huh. I I liked Cruz. Um, I liked that. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Um. And because you'd been bereaved, God was able to help you to counsel other people that were bereaved. Oh yes, um, undoubtedly. Now I'm not saying that a person who hadn't been bereaved 
you know, couldn't couldn't do believe in counselling. But what I am saying, the very fact that you've that you've been where they've been, you know, um, it, it just it just it just opens up um many many aspects um of uh, counselling. Well, I felt that anyway, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I. I, I just felt that you, you could bring something to it that maybe others just couldn't if they've never gone through. Although everybody's bereavement experience um, is different, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So we should mention as well, then, after Jim died, um, you had your big sister, Roberta, living nearby, and, and she was quite a character as well. Uh, yes, my big sister, she was um, uh, in her mid-twenties, uh, she went to work in the prison service uh-huh. and um, Greenock was where the, um, where she was uh, sent for, that was where um, the women at that time were sent, you know, I mean, it's all, it's all different now, but, yeah. um, but they were sent, so she, she went to work um in Greenock, um, and mm-hmm. um, and absolutely loved it, you know. So, so she was more or less. Um, when when I had retired, she she was um, she was just always there for me, you know. Um, and when Jim died, I uh, she was always there. Has she retired by that point then? Um. Yes, I I think she had just retired. Aye, aye. So 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 you had to have as a companion for yes, yes. I mean, she stayed in Glen and uh, Glen Rothes. Um, she um Jim Jim actually helped to get a little bungalow for her. Um, just um, um, just at the other end of Glen Rothes, and um, we we went and had a look and um. And it was lovely for her. It was a two-bedroom bungalow, and um, it just met her every need, you know. So, um, and when she came home, she she had a, a, a look at it and was um, very happy. So she actually was able to sell the little house that she had um, in Leslie, and she um, moved into a bungalow um, in Glen Rothes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in, in fact, so when Jim died, um, she was um, she was just always there for me, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as, as I say, I've got very fond memories of Roberta as well. I've actually, she... I've actually got a, a couple of books and Bibles that, that she gave me as a gift, um, and she was she was a very mm-hmm. kind person, and and like you mentioned before, she. she she, she, she had that gift, Kenny, as a boss. She, her job was to be a boss. Yes. And then she, she liked to get people right as well. In, in yes, a nice way. yes. Uh-huh. But, you know, Gordon, she, she, she always had a stack of Bibles and she, and she had a desire um, to give people Bibles, you know, and um, just if she felt so that she wanted to do it, she would just do it, you know. And she was always, in fact, when she when she 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 died, I mean, there was a whole lot of Bibles, you know, in her house, you know, um, new ones, you know. She always yeah, uh, yeah. got new ones, and she was she was always very very kind to um to help people um give them Bibles, you know. She was she was quite a character. She um she could sum up people very very quickly she was just that time maybe that was all to do with her job as well you know she just seemed to have that extra sense um about people's needs and things you know she was yeah, um, yeah. she was in fact um, when she when she left she she she, she got an, an award you know from the the queen yeah um, the a bem or something like that M- MBE, I think, was mm-hmm, it? Or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. For, her, for, her, for her work in prison. Uh, so, um, yes, we had a very close relationship. We were a very close family. And, and I suppose that because my mother had died, you know, I, she was 43 
when my mother had died. So we were a very close family, you know, and then Christine as well. Um, as I say, she was, uh, I think Roberta was nine when Christine was born. So, mm -hmm. um, Roberta then, I think she, she sadly died. It was cancer, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was cancer. Uh huh. And and it was before before they um they found it. You know, it was it was all over. You know, they couldn't do anything about it. In fact, I went. Well, maybe that's not quite true. I went to, up to the the hospital with her, and I saw the um. And it, it was it was a lady doctor, and um. And the lady doctor, you know, had said, well, um, an, an operation is just out, you know, I mean, but she said, um, we could, we could, we could start chemo, you know, we could yeah, yeah. do a course, uh, but um, she's, the doctor said, and the doctor was lovely, actually, and she said, um, well, the thing is, she said, although we could give you a course of chemo, um, it would only last, you know, six, eight, eight, eight months or something, you know? So um, my sister um, just turned and said, no, she said, um, she said, I, I don't want it. She said, um, I'm a Christian and I'm ready to die. So she said, I'll just, um, I'll just go home and we'll just take things as they were. And, you know, after she died, I got a lovely letter from that doctor mm -hmm. uh, just saying that um, she was just so impressed with, um, Roberta's attitude, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I thought that was that was lovely of her, you know, to to send me a letter, you know, and um, like that. So she she she'd seen Roberta a few times, and I suppose Roberta being Roberta, and just so matter of fact, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I so obviously that young doctor was very impressed. <laughs> that lady doctor. <laughs> It was really funny, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. Rebecca had a she, she, she had a very good testimony and. Um, oh yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. but you know, um, if you didn't have told the line, she wouldn't be slow in telling you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that I was. Remember, <laughs> oh well, yeah. She she kept people on their toes. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, she did. She did. And and you know, Gordon, periodically I would say to her. You kind of say that, you know, and she said, and she would say, but it's true. I said, well, maybe it is true. <laughs> you kind of mm -hmm. always see what you think. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. Really funny. Uh, she was really funny, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that was her, you know, so. So I was, I was, I was really bereft twice, you know, once with Jim and then next time with um, Roberta. Yeah, but, yeah. but anyway, I mean, I meet with a good body of Christians, and um, the Lord has been very good to me, Gordon, and um, has led me all the way. And sometimes the path's been dark, and sometimes I couldn't see the way right. But you know, He's never let me down, and um, yeah, yeah. I can I can honestly say that, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very good testimony you have. You've you've lived a, a long life, and you've been a Christian a long time. Yes, and the laws never let you down. You no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm not saying that I always got what I asked for, because mm -hmm. um, that just, that just wasn't his, his will for me. But you know, I've always um, accepted that. I just prayed, I've just prayed about things, and um, and just left it with the Lord, you know. And um, I look back, I've no regrets. I've no regrets. And um, I'm like my sister, I'm ready to go as well. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. When the time comes, when the time comes. <laughs> well, we hope you've got a lot of years left. Um, we appreciate your friendship um, yep. mm -hmm. and assembly and a personal basis as well. Yep. Um, so thanks, for, thanks very much, Moira, then, for sharing mm -hmm. your testimony with us, how you became a Christian. And our great prayer for those watching this, watching this today, is that if they're not Christian yet, um, something in Moira's story perhaps, or something in whatever videos will speak to them, 
and from the Bible, and they too will come to know the Lord Jesus as their Saviour as well. So thanks very much for watching, everyone. Um, if you have any questions at all, just get in touch with us on our Facebook page, and we'll get back in touch with you there. Thank you.